So physical computing with a Raspberry Pi starts with the GPIO pins. So these GPIO pins are a powerful feature. It's the row of the pins along the top edge of the board over here that stick out. And what they do is they're general purpose input output pins, which are a physical interface, literally, between the Raspberry Pi and the outside world. At the simplest level, you can think of them as tiny little switches that you can turn on or off input, or that the Pi can turn on or off output. The GPIO pins allow the Raspberry Pi to control and monitor the outside world by being connected to electronic circuits that we're going to be able to create. So you'll notice over here, 3V3, 3 volts, then over here, 5 volts, 5 volts. So those are some of the power connectors, and GND means grounds. So the ones that just have a number, general purpose 27, can be used for anything. And we're going to be using all of these different boards uh, to connect pins with our Raspberry Pi. So our first step before we light the LED is to take this little pin connecting map and we are gonna find where it says 3V3 over here in the top left. That stands for three volts. And when we put it onto the Raspberry Pi, that three volts, which is over here, is going to be faced away from the ethernet port over here. So you wanna make sure three volts is facing away from it and then you can slide these pins onto the Raspberry Pi over here so you can see that we're now able to see those pins and we can look and tell which one is going to be which on the map over here. It's 3v3 which is 3.3 volts anything connected to these pins will always get 3.3 volts of power anything connected to these pins will always get 5 volts of power. Ground is 0 volts this is used to complete a circuit and GP2, these pins are for general purpose and can be configured as input or output pins. So in terms of the category of pins, there are general purpose ones, there's a couple ground ones, there's five volts and three volts. Um, and there's a couple of special purpose pins. Warning, if you follow the instructions, then playing with these are, are safe and fun, but randomly plugging wires and power sources into your Pi, however, may destroy your Pi, especially using the five volts pins. So please make sure that you are in fact, when asked, using the proper pins to connect for all the stuff in this unit over here. So let us get started to lighting an LED. So lighting an LED, LEDs are delicate little things. If you put too much current through them, they will pop, sometimes quite spectacularly. To limit the current going through an LED, you should always use something known as a resistor in series with it. We're going to try connecting the long leg of an LED to the Pi's 3V3, so the 3 volt connector, and then the short leg to a ground pin. The resistor can be anything over 50, this symbol omega is called ohms, so 50 ohms is the level of resistance. The lower the number, the lower the resistance, so if we have too much resistance, the light will not light up. So let's get to it, and let's take a look at an example of lighting an LED. I'm going to switch to my phone. Welcome to your physical computing lesson with the Raspberry Pi over here. We have a breadboard over here, a solderless breadboard, which we're going to make a circuit with. We have our Raspberry Pi with all four of the cables plugged in with access to the internet. We can see that because this little light over here is blinking. And I'm on the Raspberry Pi on the silver switcher on PC2 with my mouse in so I can use it and I am operating it. So on this Raspberry Pi, I'm on the project Physical Computing with Python, which is what you guys are going to get started. And what you guys are going to start by making one of the first parts is using these LED lights in these cables in order to do that. Light up an LED, we are going to use our GPIO pins. You'll notice there's two rows of them over here and we're going to find the grounds, which is going to be the third one on the first row over here. So we're going to put a cable in to the third pin over there on the first row. And we're also going to put a second cable on the top pin on the second row, which is three volts over here. So the top pin on the second row, we're going to place that pin right over there. And we have the connection made. Next, we're going to attach this little thing called the resistor to our three volts wire, which right now is the one on the second row. And it's attached to the first pin over here. We're going to attach there is one end of the resistor over here into this yellow wiring and we're going to push down firmly so that our resistor is in. So a resistor is an electric component that's used to resist the flow of electric current. It is made of a conductive material such as metal and it's used to reduce the flow of electricity or to adjust the current in a circuit. They have a fixed resistance value, and this one has a value of R220, which you can see at the top over here, which means that it's 220 ohms of resistance, ohms being the unit of measure. 
This current will flow through it in proportional to the voltage and the resistance value. The amount of resistance provided by a resistor determines how much current is reduced. Resistors are used in a variety of electric circuits to control the flow of electricity and protect components from damage due to too much current. They are commonly found in devices such as radios, televisions, and computers, or in this case, we are using it for our LED light bulb so that it doesn't pop because there's too much current of electricity through it. So in the Raspberry Pi over here, we're using the 3V3, three volts of power versus five volts, which is less, but even though it's the lesser amount, we still need to use a resistor so that we don't pop the LED light bulb. So to hook up our little LED light bulb, you'll notice that there's two legs on it. We have a short leg and a long leg, which we'll get into later. We're gonna take the short leg over there and we're gonna place the short leg in our um, red cable, which is connected currently to the ground. So it's in the first row over here. So I'm gonna connect the short leg of that over there. So I can connect that, I'm gonna place that down. Then I'm gonna go back over to my resistor, which has one of the legs currently plugged into the 3V3 voltage. And I'm gonna take a second uh, cable over here and using this cable, I'm going to connect the other end of the 220 ohm resistor like so. And then I'm gonna take the empty end of it and I'm going to place the longer leg of my green LED light to it. So I'm gonna have my short leg over here and then the long leg gets plugged in. And when I plug this in, you should notice our little light lights up over here. So we have now connected a circuit where we have ground in one. And as long as this is plugged in, we're going to have the current connected to the ground to make a circuit to light this little LED up over here. Keep in mind that without this resistor at 220 ohms, or at least anything over 50 ohms, this would be too bright and might pop. Now that we've successfully turned this on, we're gonna move this three volt pin, which always has electricity, over six down in the second row to GP17, general purpose 17. So I'm gonna take this cable, which will make the light turn off, and I'm gonna count down six, two, three, four, five, six, I'm gonna plug this into general purpose ports 17. And even though the LED turned off, it's now in a GPIO pin, therefore we'll be able to be controlled by code. So we're gonna now be able to program it. All right, to open up our code browser on the Raspberry Pi, we're gonna click on the Raspberry icon, go to programming and open up Thani over here. Thani is a very simple um, Python editor that we can use. And when we open it up over here, it's gonna have a blank page over here. Now, I've already written something, but on this blank page over here, we are going to copy the instructions from the code over here for once we're not using Moo, we're using Thani to switch on the LED on and off. So GPIO0 is a new Python library, which provides a simple interface to everyday GPIO components. So we have used libraries before, and we are going to be importing from that library so we can use some of the GPIO commands. So for the first line, we want to type from GPIO0, import LED into Thani over here. So from GPIO0, import LED. And on the second line over here, we're going to put LED is equal to LED17. That way we know that it's in the port number 17 over here. So we've already switched it over there. We're going to copy that code over here. And now what we're going to do is what you'll notice is on the next line, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch the LED on by typing LED dot on. And when I type this and I run the code, you'll see our LED light light up over here. And then if I were to change that to LED off, it would turn the LED off, LED off. And I run that and the little LED light turns off. So we can see that we're able to via code, via Thani with our little program, we can switch the uh, little light on and off, but that's not all we can do. We can use the time library over here. So we're gonna add this command to flash an LED to our code. So from GPI zero, import LED, we already have that. And now to add to our program, we're gonna say from time import sleep over here. So from time import sleep, LED is still LED 17, which is good. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to say, we're going to use a while loop over here. So we're going to type over here, while true. And you'll notice that these are all indented over here. So we're creating a while loop. So while the following statement is true, at the end of this, hit enter, and it will automatically give you that indent. You'll notice that over here in Thani, a tab is a total of four spaces. But I would just hit tab to be safe. So you have those four spaces while true. LED on, sleep one, LED off, sleep one over here. So what this is gonna end up doing is it's gonna flash a little LED light for one second. So if I run that, you'll notice it goes on, off, on, off over there. And it's doing that continuously while it's true. So essentially this is a way to make it happen forever. You'll notice it's still blinking over here. So save the file and run the code, which we just did. The LED light should be flashing on and off. To exit the program, click stop. So if we click stop, the LED light will stop where it is. Now I stopped it while the program over here was still on. If I wanted it to be off, let's run it. And I'm gonna stop the program while the LED light's off. And now it's gonna stay off over here. To save it, we're gonna click save over here. That way we can save this version of our program. And I'm gonna name this over here LED lights version one v1 and that's a Python file and I'm going to go ahead and save that on my desktop and I'm going to click OK to save that and it asks me over here they usually have .py extensions did I mean .py yes I did we want this to be known as a Python file so we name it .py I click yes and now I have this file on my desktop where if I were to click it I would be able to reopen this program and that is it for this section of the video. The next video that we're gonna get into is going to be working on using buttons to get input.